natural. It just comes naturally. Roundabout face all that shit the alternative is back for the seventh time episode seven right here on a big tv on youtube welcome colin what's going on another week another round aew dynamites in the books life is in the books how are you how you been all that stuff where can everyone catch you on social media and all that goodness uh yeah it's nice to nice to be back talking to aew definitely a, a fun week for the show a fun week for the the wednesday night wars as it's called uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Uber Thai Guy. Uh, check me out on Instagram. Same name, just with underscores in between the words. Pretty simple. Yeah, as always on Twitter at the Hibiki TMD. All that goodness. Hit that red button down below, all that stuff. I do want to say real quick, it feels like an eternity, even though it hasn't been, because we did this last week, but I think it's because we doubled up. We doubled up with like the full gear and dynamite last. It feels like for me, we've done this for, but we haven't. So. We're keeping it consistent again on a roll two weeks in a row. Logan Myers was supposed to be on, uh, but he wasn't feeling well. He will. He's given us his word. He's actually signed the contract in pure blood that'll be here next week. But we are here this week, and I feel like uh, the street, even though we'll say it, you know, real quick, the ratings we don't want to get into. But finally, NXT won in the ratings this week. But I still feel like. For me, just because it's Survivor Series crunch time, and I put out the tweet earlier today where I feel like that's a shame how many dream matches WWE's wasted in the span of three weeks just to get cheap buys for Survivor Series, but that's how I've looked at this. Yeah, it's been cool, but at the end of the day, there's after November, it doesn't matter. It goes, it, re, it you know what I mean? It's like it never happened. It's just because it's Survivor Series, whereas AEW has to be a consistently booked program each week because it's new, because it, it doesn't have Survivor Series. There's only one brand. I got to give it to AEW as quality this week. Yeah, I, I do. I got to be honest. No, I, I definitely agree. Like, I mean, I, I watch both shows at the same time. It's, it's difficult sometimes, but I I just, I like both shows equally. I can't, I can't just skip one of them now. And so, yeah, I will say I, I did thoroughly enjoy NXT show. It, it was a good show. They definitely did have a lot of, um, you know, kind of dream matches, so to speak. I mean, I will say I am a bit upset they, they kind of, uh, they they gave us uh, Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch, and it ended with the the fuck finish. And I mean, to each their own. But the revival and undisputed era, fantastic match, a good finish. So good show all together. But yeah, no AEW, another fantastic show. The thing is, they're not like like regardless of what the ratings say, they have a fantastic show each week. There hasn't been a bad one yet. And you can say that for NXT. I feel like too, there hasn't been a bad NXT on USA. I've I have honestly yet to see a bad NXT episode since like 2015, to be honest. It's it's been the most consistent promotion of wrestling besides New Japan, where it's it's a totally different animal, in my opinion. You can't compare it. For sure. No, absolutely. Um I, I, I just want to put a disclaimer though. I'm not saying this week that I feel like NXT was dog shit. I feel like in spurts it was great. And it's not that Colin I'm old school in a sense in this. It's not that I hate that we're getting these cool what-if matches, right, with Matt Riddles and Keith Lee. It's that I'm old school in a sense that I love build more than anything to a dream match. I love the build to any match. That's what. That's the best part about any match, if you really think about it. Just, and, and to make this heavy and deep, that's kind of a key thing in life, too. It's It's like our parents used to tell us, right, about about rushing into things and take your time and hard work and it pays off and wait and be patient. It's, it really is true with wrestling. It really is. And I get it. Sometimes it's cool to hot shot book, but when you just, <laughs> you do it for the sake of it and you stack hot shot booking in the course of throughout an entire show with no real flow to your show with, with when the show is the whole thing, a sense of who's going to pop up next. That's a gimmicked show. In my opinion, if that makes sense. It definitely, it definitely was a, a, yeah, is to put it a gimmick show. But the thing is with wrestling fans, we like, you know, we like the surprises. We like the things that we just haven't seen. You know, we didn't see it coming. And I mean, I'm sure we all saw multiple people interfering, but it was cool to see, you know, who was going to come next and everything like that. I mean, we certainly didn't get a Roman Reigns or a King Corbin like uh, Brian Alvarez suspected from his uh, source. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> We, we definitely got uh, a decent amount of people. I don't even think Alvarez tweets out letters anymore. It's always numbers and figures and ratings. It's the same thing each week. Jesus I mean, hey, at least, at least he's more credible than our, our good pal Brad Shepard. 
Ugh. Yeah. That, that, that's going to be a special, maybe in January, Hibiki High Spots focusing on a certain uh, Twitter douchebag. No, I, and once again, both shows were good, but let's get to the show why we're here. Uh, AEW Dynamite, this one, this one kicked off in, in, a, in a match that I don't remember being promoted at all going in unless I missed something. I didn't really catch Dark at all this week, but this match was the sleeper of the show, in my opinion, stole the show, and I feel like a couple months from now, any any length of time from now when we start getting some lineage to AEW and, and enough to cram out some Blu-rays and DVDs, this could be on any compilation for AEW so far. Great match, Nick Jackson and Ray Phoenix, holy shit. Oh yeah, no, it was it was great. Uh, I do remember it being advertised. It was, it was announced at some point during the week. Uh, yeah, no, it opened the show great. I feel like this is a fantastic match to open the show with. I was a huge fan of the fact that uh, Matt Jackson and Pentagon Jr. weren't at ringside. They just let them both go out there and and fight. And I'm also a huge fan of the fact that it didn't end with some sort of fuck finish. It was a straightforward one on one match. As far as I can remember, there wasn't really any cheating or anything like that. It's just a very straightforward match. And uh, Phoenix defeating Matt Jackson, fantastic uh, decision in my opinion. I think Phoenix is going to be a... I think Phoenix and Pentagon Jr. is a tag team. Great. I think they're both going to be phenomenal singles wrestlers when that day comes. And I think this just shows how great Phoenix and Nick Jackson both as singles competitors are. I agreed with the finish, too, and, and what I liked even better than the match quality was what happened after the match when uh, Jackson went to shake hands. And this is why I liked it so much, because that's a, one of my uh, other biggest things that's happened in wrestling in the course of the last 10 years. These, let's break kayfabe, let's break everything, after every match and shake hands, like, you know what I mean? And you get away with that. The best one I've ever seen is still to this day Undertaker and Jeff Hardy back in, like, 2002 after a ladder match, because that kind of made Jeff Hardy... But now and then, that's great. But when you do it every match, and I feel like NXT's been guilty of that probably as much as I praised it earlier. Yeah, it's it just as guilty of that problem. Uh, but I love this here. Ray Phoenix kind of said, eat it, and walked off. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, and and it, it also uh, continues the storyline between you know the Lucha Brothers, the Young Bucks, and everything like that. I think, yeah, no, I think great finish. Um, the match itself, brutal. <laughs> I mean... When uh, Jackson delivered the German, German suplex on the uh, the ring apron, beautiful. I do want to say something that stood out to me, and I can't help it. Come at me. I got to start being a little negative. Christ, we're agreeing on everything already. It, yes, this was a million flips in high spots galore, and if you can accept that in your modern wrestling, which we do, we go into this shit open-minded, it was fine. It wasn't, it was a lot, but I don't feel like, because there was, there was some good selling in this match. For one, Ray Phoenix's finisher. I'm so glad that was the finish because, man, what a finish. And that should never be kicked out of if it's hit that crisp and that sound. Um, uh, other than that, what really stood out to me, I got to say it, the one time, the one wrestling hold in this match, when Jackson applied the sharpshooter, the one time he needed to do it. I know the Young Bucks had bad backs and all this shit, but it looked like shit. It looked like ass. I'm sorry, Colin. I mean, I can't really think of very many people outside of, like, Bret Hart and Natalia. And I, to be fair, I think Lacey Evans has a pretty damn good sharpshooter. Cesaro. There's not really a whole lot of people who can pull off the move that well. Cesaro and The I Rock mean, did pretty well. Owen Hart uh, had, a, had a just a, I liked, actually, come at me, I liked Owens better than Bret sometimes. It looked more textbook, if that makes sense. Hot takes on that. The alternative. Come at I mean, I love them both, but, man. Owens was just that's if I had to show a wrestling school class and that's the that's how I would show it how to apply as Owens for sure I miss Owen Hart yeah I, I never watched him growing up because I'm pretty sure he died the same year I was born which you know not, not to make you feel old by any means but well, yeah it's crazy we'll see you guys next week right here on the alternative Colin has just buzz killed everything <laughs> about my age Owen Hart's death <laughs> Just in one fell swoop, you just pulled the plug. Um, you know, here, okay, I got it. Questionable booking. I'm going to continue my negativity a little bit, Colin. I was really worried that what they had to follow, that follow this match-wise involved Britt Baker in it, Colin. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I still, I think Britt Baker's fine. I think she's gotten used to the TV, uh, TV program and everything like that. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely think uh, Britt Baker and uh, her, Karu Shida, I 
can never pronounce first names of any of these fucking wrestlers. Um, I'm just going to go, yep. I love Sheeta, though. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it wasn't, wasn't a bad match. I mean, I have to give it to them. I don't think it was a bad match at all. The entrance looks like a disco ball and Pepsi Man combined with, like, I don't know, something from Injustice 2. I, I like it. I just, her entrance is all, I've, I've never seen anything really like that. It was definitely something, I wasn't quite sure who was coming out. Like, I saw that, and I'm like, oh, is it someone someone new from Stardom or anything like that? No, just, just she to doing something different. Yeah, come at me, Stardom fans, if I don't know my shit on her entrances. I have other things to do. Um, I will say, though, I will say, and I'm sure you can agree with me here, I was absolutely thrilled when Sheeta beat Britt Baker. I was shocked. I, I was shocked at the finish. Be, and it's weird when I was watching this, I kind of saw the fans not take start to take a shit because even the way the match flowed and just the whole psychology of it, it, it seriously looked like Britt Baker because what she kicked out of the one uh, big signature move from uh, what's her face she kicked out of that and then it was like oh here comes the comeback and they're gonna try to make but no i mean she see in watching this here's what i would do here's here's how i'd fantasy book Britt baker heal her he make her this because that way if, if you exploit her weaknesses and ring it, it works even better because she's a heel and she you know what i mean cheap heel heat right there like if she accidentally fucks up a move or something she can just look at the crowd and say fuck you or whatever do it and just, I, I don't know, I don't want to say, make her like the basis of her heel character kind of be this anti from overseas talent coming in or indie, like she's the all American woman and she should be the face of AEW. Maybe that's something like that, you know, maybe a more refined Lacey Evans, not so basic bitch. I hate to say bitch when saying these women, I don't mean it like that. Right, right. No, for sure. I think Britt Baker would be a phenomenal heel. I, I think, no doubt, she'd be a great heel. Um, yeah, I think I think a heel turn is, is definitely something that they should do, especially... We saw a little of that after uh, the finish, Colin. Sorry to cut you off. We did see a little bit of tantrum from Baker, and it looked good. For sure, for sure. I, I think the heel turn is slowly building, and I think, I think what's going to end up happening is... Oh, Christ almighty, for the life of me, I can't think of the name of the women's champion. I feel like an... Rio! I... Yeah, that's the one. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. <laughs> but thank you, Travis. It's not um, like it's yeah, this I long, think... elaborate name to fucking remember, no, either. Not, no, that's the thing. It's not something that's like, it's not hard to pronounce. It's not anything bad. I just couldn't remember it. But yeah, no, I think I think eventually Rio will beat Britt Baker in their title match, and that's when the heel turn happens. And then when they right. give Britt Baker the rematch, because that's the rules of wrestling, that's when she'll win. Yeah, maybe with help from a kind of like what they're doing with Jazzy Gabbard. But Nyla is like her enforcer type, maybe. Right. Is that too generic to do, though? Especially since they're doing it with Jenny and Jazzy Gabbard in NXT UK. I, I, I'm, this is the part of the show where I admit I don't watch NXT UK all that often. Well, there's a character named Jenny who's like this rich little princess character. She's from Progress. Pretty much they all fucking are. I mean, it's, it's NXT UK. Um, but her big, her bodyguard's that big uh, girl, broad, whatever you want to call her, from the May Young Classic. What was that? I think Colin's thing died. I think that's what happened. We were talking about it off air. Unless that you're still there because you haven't hung up. If not, we'll be right back, I suppose, on the alternative. Stick around. Pretty sure Colin's laptop died. We're going to remedy this. Part two. Here, episode seven of the alternative. No, he's here. He's laughing. We're not, we're gonna, we're not going to break. We're here. All right. I'm sorry. My laptop just fucking reset for some reason. I'm surprised it didn't end the call. But All I heard, we go. It, it sounded like someone was calling in. That was the weirdest part. It was that boop, boop. Boop, boop thing. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that too. Was my like I, I turned my laptop back on. All right, but we're good. I mean, plus we can edit this all out, so it's fine. I'm not doing that because in the history of fucking five years on this channel, I've never segued it fully to a break and then didn't need to go to a break. So it's first time for everything. Salvaged it. All right, history, history making here on the alternative. 
History making. And I feel like, let's get back on track. Where were we? Britt Baker. I feel like this match wasn't crap, but it didn't set my world on fire. There, It wasn't... I, I'd watch it again, but it's not something I'd recommend to anybody, I feel like. Yeah, it's definitely not a match you like need to go out of your way to see, but it wasn't bad either. It's a stepping stone on the way to the story for Britt hopefully turning heel. It's just what it is. For sure. Where Absolutely. Does- where did that take us to next? Because on my format, it's a little off track. There was a lot of promo goodness coming up, though. Oh, for sure. For sure. I, th- I believe next was the Dynamite Dozen Battle Royale. Mm, the Billy Gunn Show. Not a, <laughs> basically. Uh, not a whole lot of people in the match itself. Definitely surprising. I thought there'd be more. But we, if, I can, uh, rem- if I can remember them off the top of my head and not read them from a list I clearly have right in front of me. Uh, in the Battle Royal, we had M. Jeff, Billy Gunn, Kip Sabian, Jungle Boy, Hangman Adam Page, Chuck Taylor, Joey Janela, Sonny Kiss, haven't seen him in a while, my, uh, one of my favorites, Orange Cassidy, Trent, question mark, uh, Pentagon Jr., and Jimmy Havoc, and they were all uh, battling for that AEW Diamond Ring. I, I wonder what the Diamond Ring is going to mean. It, are they just doing it to get people there? Uh, is the ring going to kind of be like sort of like the X Division title or like a Money in the Bank where you can just cash in on a title shot at any point. Who knows? But I guess we'll see next week. If Jimmy Havoc would have won the match, would he then be allowed back in Jimmy Seafood? <laughs> I I would hope so. I mean, Jimmy Seafood's like – I feel like Jimmy Seafood just sponsors all of wrestling entirely. So if you're banned from there, then it's, it's not good. Gotta be honest, it's one of the maybe the best corporate uh, Twitter account to follow that talks about wrestling. Absolutely, they'll roast guys too, like like wrestlers. It's great. Um, this battle royal, though, gotta be honest, it wasn't great. It, it wasn't. It's it felt get. Ra- it just felt like one big giant. It's all the gimmick guys, and that sucks because it wasn't full of gimmick guys. But the the gimmick guys that were in it were so gimmick guys that it just stood out over anything else, especially. Andre the Giant in here and, and Billy Gunn's tights. Oh, wait, that is Billy Gunn. My God, and talk, he's, is he the most over guy in AEW right now? I mean, that guy is jacked beyond belief. I mean, I'm surprised that I, he could probably get a world title run and I wouldn't question it at this point. Man's, man's in good shape. Why, um, and, and real quick, brainstorm, you ready? We talked about the enforcer thing. Yes, we can do it in AEW. Put Kip as the enforcer of Kip Sabian, who has a girlfriend. There's a little entourage, the four of them. And just have... I think that'd be, yeah. I think that'd be a fantastic idea. Boom. Kip and Kip. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> the, the, next, uh, the next tag team, K&K, instead of P&P. Um, For, before you yeah, say I, your thoughts on what you thought about the match, who did you think was going to win? Because I think one, two, three, you ready? M. Jeff. I slowed it, it down. It was going to be M. Jeff and Hangman Page. There were no other options as far as I'm concerned. Um, I, but yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely a rocky start. I'm a, I'm a whore for Battle Royals and a Royal Rumble, so I mean, I was looking forward to this anyways. Um, God, that needs to be I a t-shirt say, in the store. I'm a whore for Battle Royals and just your picture. I I will buy it. Please, Travis, let's do it. I need I need merch. You got a month point. for need... Christmas. That could be your Christmas present to have your own shirt in my store. Oh, that'd be beautiful. Um, You're gonna yeah, buy your own present, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I will say, uh, best moment of the match is easily when Sunny Kiss started twerking for Billy Gunn, and in the back corner, you just saw Orange Cassidy lower his glasses down and. Sneak a peek. I don't know if you caught that, but I thought that was hilarious. Unfortunately, Colin, we're pros, and it's my job to catch everything that goes down to AEW Dynamite. And I'm going to pretend I didn't catch it because I just, it is what it is. It was a little comedy bit. What I did like was the little glimpse of a future star and uh, just the way the crowd reacted when it seemed like it was going to be Jungle Boy Jack Perry now, uh, which, uh, by the way, I don't mind that name change at all. Like, at least it's more, it's another he, layer, and they can go into vignettes in the future when they take it more seriously when he is a single, then get into his dad and stuff, you know? Is he actually being called Jungle Boy Jack Perry now? Yeah, at least Jim Ross constantly calls him that. He refuses to call him anything else. It's kind of been like this gag I, on Twitter. I think this Jim week. Ross kind of just does his own thing, but, yeah. you know. He's yeah, Pac he next week. He's it. Pac. He's Pac. He's Pac. Right, right. Yeah, no, I would... <laughs> 
Yeah, no, I definitely, uh, yeah, no, when it got to the end and you saw it was, it was Jungle Boy and Hangman Page, I saw the, those two and I'm like, holy shit, that's going to be a fantastic match. And then naturally, because I got sucked into everything, there goes MJF yanking them off the apron and getting the win. So, I mean, a very, very predictable finish in, in, in this case. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm looking forward to MJF and Hangman Page. I think it's going to be a good match, I think. You know, it, it'll give an. I think MJF is going to end up winning, and I think it'll just give him another reason to just be an asshole, which is the best part about MJF. Um, and, and this is for our good pal uh, Rocky. We got we got a little bit more award low this week, uh, helping MJF get the win a little bit, helping uh, dump dump Billy Gunn out, everything like that. So I, I'm liking the partnership between them. Thank you again, Rocky, for uh, for uh, reaching out about more Wardlow. And in return, for two weeks in a row, shouting you out, since you're the Photoshop wizard, I want Carl Winslow, and I want Wardlow, and I want a mixed, and I want to see what you come up with. Um, Carl Wardlow. <laughs> the best part about this match for me, honestly, was the finish. And I feel like, if you look at it from this way, it was fucking brilliant. Because you could already see, and this totally reminded me of that Royal Rumble when it came down to Roman Reigns, when he was just a shield guy in Batista, and the crowd was like, and... You know what I mean? And you yeah, could already exactly. see when he was just standing on the apron, you could already see which way that was going to go. And if, if and then I'm saying it's brilliant because what they're trying to do is establish Paige as one of the top eight. It was brilliant to book it that way because you didn't get any of that. You got you got MJF stealing all the heat, which is exactly what they need to do because he's feuding with maybe the top guy right now. This was great. This was exactly probably what I would have done if I would have been able to sit down and think how to book the finish with these three. That's exactly the way I would have done it. Tip of the hat. Well done. For sure, and I, I do want to point something out that I don't know if a lot of people caught. I don't know if you caught it or not, uh, but uh, at some point, I believe it was Jim Ross who referred to Hangman Page. Like they were advertising the match for next week, I think, and they referred to him as, quote, the newly solo Hangman Adam Page. So I don't know if that has anything to do with what's going on on Being the Elite, but, you know, it maybe appears Hangman Page is distancing himself from the elite or something like that so i guess we'll i guess we'll see what happens there. and there's that little tidbit it's seven episodes into this fucking show colin it's the same problem the biggest flaw with this company you're one of the biggest goddamn fans of the elite i've ever met in my life since god how long i've ever known you since day one you've always been hey you know blah blah, blah being the elite you're one of the more diehard fans of these guys well you were i don't know if you still are as much as you used to be but even in your heyday you don't even know the answer to that question and there it is there's that problem they're not putting enough of the the details like that as to why you know it's just don't confuse your fucking fans there it is right and the same thing is like I, I like the idea of there being that sideshow being the elite and it playing into the storylines on tv but just not everyone is going to watch it so problem is is you can't rely too heavily on that show to make everything on tv make sense and if you're going to you have to do something like if they started showing clips from being the elite on on dynamite that gave us a little more context into why matches are happening or you know the whole newly solo thing it, it, that would be perfect and i don't even know if that has anything to do with being the elite i'm just speculating here no yeah. Anyway, that's what they're doing. Like we said, predictable, but a good kind of predictable. And we're getting the match next week, Thanksgiving Eve. First of all, yes, it's on Thanksgiving Eve. We've failed to uh, mention that real quick. Do you think it's going to do well in the number? I think it will, even though it is Drunksgiving. Um, a lot, I mean, there are younger fans that are into AEW, I'm sure. Yeah, no, it, definitely. I, I think, I mean, Thanksgiving Eve is not, you know, I feel like isn't too important of a day that people are, I mean, I think the major issue is people might be traveling that day, but I mean, for the most part, I think they'll probably do fine. We'll see. We'll see. And if there's a big dip, I mean, people are going to freak out either way. I'm mean, Jesus Christ. I, I've muted ratings, by the way, on Twitter. Legit. <laughs> Understandable. It, 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 it's definitely fun to get onto Twitter every Thursday morning and see everyone just losing their minds over what the ratings are, who's won this week, and everything like that. The one I would mute in a heartbeat, and I would have muted ages ago, is Anita Sarkeesian. That's a whole other fucking topic or show or animal or podcast, whatever. But, Christ, it's so fun to just fire back at her because the best part is so many. She, like, on any tweet she sends out, she has almost 3,000 replies. And I, I guarantee you at least 1,500 of them are fucking beyond negative, right? 
So it's just it's just great to fire them assholes like that. Anyway, let's get back. <laughs> I, I will say one last thing on that. There are definitely, there are definitely some AEW fan accounts that just, oh man, they put a they put a bad name onto onto the fans of AEW and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Well, wrestling Twitter as a whole, you just summed up pretty much. I, yeah, re- wrestling Twitter as a whole is a whole fucking enigma. But we're glad, not you guys, not you, the listeners of this show every week. We are, we are the, what are we, Colin? The epitome of the, the upper class of the wrestling fan right here. This show and all the shows right here on the Vicky TMD and on ProWrestlingJournal.com. Cheap plug, unismack.bigcartel.com, all your official and Vicky TMD merch. Let's get back. Is it time for the Chris Jericho promo? It, it is time for Chris Jericho's major announcement. Here is your weekly. <clears throat> Holy shit! The fucking sadder that, or uh, cuter than baby Yoda line or whatever that was. I all literally it was this close to the the liquid in my mouth. I was taking a drink, being spit out when that happened. Oh my god! I, the, the pop culture they 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 referenced was just fantastic. This whole this whole like this whole promo and the whole announcement itself. Great. I love the fact that Jericho, the very comical and cartoonish Jericho, couldn't say the word sorry. So they had he had Hager say it. And, I think I tweeted something like this. Maybe I said this is in poor taste, but I'll say it here because fuck it. I, I thought it was funny that um, they give the sentence Chris Jericho wants to say he's sorry with so many S's to a man who has a lisp. That was the – I, I was watching that. I was like, rib, fucking rib. <laughs> they're, they're definitely hazing the new guy. Um. Uh, the best part about this for me was probably seeing Jake Hager the entire time not try not to corpse and just break. And I, just... I, I saw that, yeah. Every single time he was just trying not to laugh. It was just fantastic to watch. But yeah, no, he, he was trying to say he was sorry and, and that he'll be getting his thank you next week in Chicago. And then, and then uh, as he went to leave, SCU came out, as I, I was hoping they would. I mean, you can't have Scorpio Sky just pin the champion and not follow up on that the next week. I'm probably going to take some flack for this. You ready? Uh, hit me with it. Well, you might fully disagree, too. I thought Scorpio Sky was awful on the mic for the most part. Completely awful. I'm sorry. I know he's a veteran. He's a tremendous wrestler. He's got a great look. He could be a top guy, but less is more on the mic, please. And, and yeah, it was, it was a chuckle. It's been, and Jericho saved it, but that line, where the fuck did that come from about an ex-girlfriend? <laughs> it was. Oh. It was definitely. A, it was definitely an interesting. That. Promo, but I mean, his promo was, alone has felt the most WWE out of anything I've seen on AEW yet. I'm gonna say it. This promo from just, just Scorpio Sky's end just felt like a performance center manufactured look out there and just just talk, pal. I'm sorry. I mean, it was very WWE-ish with the line uh, Scorpio Sky said to Chris Jericho about. He'll turn the lit champion into the lit bitch. I, I thought like that would have been a perfect line in WWE, just because they have a weird fetish for the word bitch now. It's like it's thrown out every other that's week such, at this point. You, when I heard that, I was like, man, that's such a Vince line. Something he would have wrote in there. <laughs> such a Vince line. Everyone's a bitch. Vince's ghost for writing uh, AEW's promos. I don't feel, could you imagine? I don't feel like that killed it, though. This entire segment was still pretty much gold for me. I mean, Christ. I mean, Chris Jericho, at this point, it, any other guy holding that title for the first time, if you think about it now, hindsight 2020, it was the right call, and it, it wouldn't feel right now. It needed to be Chris Jericho, let's say it. Oh, absolutely. No, Chris Jericho is a phenomenal person to put the belt on first, especially because he's Chris fucking Jericho. Like, there isn't a name in wrestling that's all, like, there are very few names in wrestling that they will just stand the test of time forever, and Chris Jericho is easily one of them. The three professional wrestlers, in my opinion, in the entire world right now, who carry themselves like world champions better than any guy in any promotion, none of them are in WWE. Okada... Nick Aldis and this right here, Chris Jericho, all three of those guys carry themselves like a world champion for the most part from any fucking era, especially Aldis. I mean, but Aldis isn't a nostalgia show anyway, so that's kind of a cheap way to, you know what I mean? But still, all those guys, come at me. No, I, I, I would agree entirely. No, that's that's absolutely correct. Uh, yeah, no, I would, 
Yeah, I would. I and and agree with that. I don't want to get too off topic, but I got to say, how sad is that? That none of those guys are from WWE in any any branch, UK, NXT, and they have a performance center and they've spent millions of dollars, yet none of the guys I've named are from that company. I mean, I'll, I'll at least give WWE some credit. I think Walter would probably fit into the year. Your criteria for yeah. championship so well, regardless of if it's a WWE uh, championship or not. I think Walter's a good someone who carries himself well as a champion. Walter's been Walter for so long in WXW and just all over Europe, though, and he's, he hasn't been around that long. In WWE, he, they haven't changed a thing from who he was on. On so, is that really them in that case? You know what I mean? Like, right, right. Anyway, the, man, I don't want to derail everything, but I just have to say. The the alternative. This this promo was great. I love the shirt too, Jericho. Colin, what what did you think of this whole thing? Tell him, Big Hurt. Uh, no, I, yeah, no, it was a fantastic segment. Chris Jericho is great. Um, I liked uh, the um, the ending of it. Uh, Jurassic Express came out to try and try and fight off uh, the inner circle after the uh, the whole brawl started happening. Uh, huge pop once again. Uh, for for Luchasaurus, Luchasaurus and Jericho squared up for a bit, and then the pop was huge. The standoff. I think they... Go ahead. No, I was just saying. I thought you were going into the standoff with him and Hager. Yeah, I go into that too. Yeah, no, I think that's going to be a good, uh, good like big guy match because I mean Hager and Luchasaurus are just about the same size, so it'll definitely be, um, it'll definitely be a good match there. I, you know, call me. Call me insane, but I think, I, I mean, I don't think they're going to do it. I'd be very surprised if they even came close to doing this. I think if they really wanted to create some buzz in the, the AEW world, I think Jericho dropping the bell to Luchasaurus would be a fantastic idea. Maybe. I could see that. What I see him doing with Luchasaurus, I just see. I don't see Jurassic Express being a, a unit a year from now. Okay, I feel like Luchasaurus at some point is going to go fucking just. He's going to be, become kind of a darker type character, take the mask off, and it's going to be this dramatic shit and kind of like some Pentagon type shit. And then by then, maybe Pentagon will be a babyface. Imagine that feud or something. I I feel like they're going to go a different route. They're going to do maybe. For him, he's going to be more of a guy in their eyes, I feel like. Or I would, too. A guy that doesn't really need to be in a title match. He's so, I mean, look at him, for Christ's sake. He is an attraction on his own. He's like a brawn, if booked right, which brawn isn't. <laughs> you know, I, I, could, I could see what you're doing there, totally. I'd totally be behind it, because I think the dude's great, you know. For sure. They would have to build it. I'm not saying, you know, like, just do it on just a random way. Right. Like, yeah, they yeah. need to build him up a little bit, but I think... It would be a fantastic idea to work with. Is Luchasaurus AEW's Kane right now? Like 2002 Kane, where people just loved him and he was a badass? I I would say so. I mean... That's I, not a, I, that I, is a compliment, too, by the way, people. I just want to point oh that no, out. Kane, yeah, no, it's like comparing someone to Kane is not an insult. Kane is, has been one of the better... Uh, big men in history. I'm not, yeah, we're not talking fucking J&J &J security cane. We're talking like prime O2 fucking shit kicker cane. Right, right. Uh, yeah, no, I think I think it was a good setup. It, it built up Luchasaurus, and then we had it uh, segue into a match. Uh, actually, really quick, before I, I get to the, the person he faces in this match, Do it. Uh, reminds me of something that... that Piss me! For once, I have a I have a complaint, a criticism about AEW. Holy shit! Timestamps ready, people at the helm. Go, Colin. This I I had a problem with what they did uh, before the announcement. I I it, it reminded me of this. Jericho was backstage with Hager, and he starts walking around, and they cut to the uh, the commercial where they have Jericho. They have the the show in the side box, but they have the commercial playing. And you can see in the box, Chris Jericho is talking to a bunch of different people. We can't, we don't know what he's saying, though, because it's ad commercial. And it just didn't make any sense to be like, like, why, like, why do that at all? If you're going to gut, if you're going to cut to commercial when Jericho is backstage talking to people, what is the point of even having the, you know, the, the show in the, in the side box? It made no sense to me. And like, I realize that's not like a huge criticism, 
But it just I saw it and it confused the fuck out. I was very like I I didn't know why they were doing it. I am gonna you're gonna make fun of me. I'm gonna make myself sound like the biggest fucking grandpa in the world right now. I am still not used because I I haven't watched professional wrestling on actual cable television in ages. And just really any modern sport. I'm still getting accustomed to the picture-in-picture -picture shit during breaks. Like, if, if I would have had this as a kid, like, during Raw or some shit, or just, like, any era, it would have been amazing to see what, you know... Because you always wonder what went on on commercial breaks as a kid, you know? For sure. Uh, that's, it's absolutely right. I, I, whenever WWE goes to commercial, when I was, like... Uh, when I was uh, younger watching it, I'd always be like, oh, I wonder what's going on. And now I get to see that same kind of thing happening with... WWE show, AEW, any other kind of show. But, like, this part, it just didn't make sense. Like, if they're in a match and wrestling, okay, that makes sense. You don't have to listen to commentary or anything like that. You can still watch what's happening. Yeah. But if he's, if he's talking to people backstage, it makes no sense. Why are they showing this? Isn't that wonderment, too, maybe, some seeds they're planting? Like, that's intentional. I mean, that's some deep fucking booking. I don't think they're going that deep with the booking, honestly. No, I, I seriously doubt it. But uh, anyways, uh, I know Jericho was... Uh, he, he talked to one uh, Mr. Peter Avalon. Yeah. I know you ratted me last Your time. grandma's <laughs> favorite lounge singer. Everyone's grandmother's uh, favorite lounge singer. I, I can... Uh, uh, breaking news here on the, the, the alternative. I, I, I can no longer make the comparison between me and Mr. Avalon. As I have cut my hair, the locks are gone. That's I'm sure right. Everyone rejoices in the background, but yeah. I'm How the sure. fuck did I not bring that up at the top of the show? Colin did it. He I'm uh, surprised. Colin jumped ship, and he, they made him change his look, and he came in with a new gimmick. They changed his name. How's you know? I'm I'm glad it's working out for you. Do you still get to keep the jacket? I I do. I still get to keep the jacket. That was that was in my contract. The jacket stays. There you have when it. I, when I when I re, when I resigned, it said that I have to cut the hair, shave the mustache, and start a new gimmick. But I got to keep the jacket. I made sure if I with no jacket, I would have left it. Well, hey, congratulations on the haircut, Colin. Keep up the good work. Um, <laughs> Thank you. What this took us to? What Peter Avalon and Luchasaurus after the little? Yeah, yeah. Peter Avalon, Luchasaurus, just a very simple squash match. It's what Av Avalon's there for. Uh, I will say, I did find it funny that Avalon. Um, uh, threatened to turn Luchasaurus into fuel and called him a fossil. I, 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 do, I did like that a lot. The other, I the oh, the better be line was the Jurassic Park reference. Um, <laughs> I see life found a way after all. It's just, I mean, I will say, Avalon is good on the microphone. I, I don't know if he's a good wrestler. I, I never heard of him before he became the librarian no. with AEW. But I'd be very interested to see what he can do in the wrestling ring. He I'm with you, and I, I feel, I, I feel like I, I I agree with you that he's doing his role exactly what he needs to be. Like he's a good enough heel to be this chicken shit that gets guys over. But at the same time, look wise and probably just as an overall talent, he's not any guy I'd put in the upper echelon. So he's probably right where he should be. For sure, no, absolutely, and I think when the day comes where he might actually possibly try and become like an upper mid card kind of guy i think it'll work out fine i think hopefully we can see what he does but uh yeah very very quick squash match decent enough uh like i said luchasaurus fantastic uh i can't i can't wait to see uh what they do with it it'll be be pretty great uh, what gonna, was next travis well real it was a pnp and uh la, 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 private party yeah I know, I know you're going to have uh, some things to say about the, the referees here. But well, I, yeah, this is I kind of the... Go ahead, sorry, Colin. Uh, yeah, I, I will say, though, I mean, I, a Private Party, one of my favorite tag teams in AEW, in AEW probably my favorite tag team in AEW. Uh, I think a botched, uh, botched pinfall aside, this was a phenomenal match. And I think... I think... Uh, Private Party getting the win, too. Great decision. Fantastic decision. I mean, you can uh, let the referee have it now. Well, I was, you know, if anyone saw the tweet, everyone's seen the meme by now. I mean, is it a case of this this spot killed the match? No, I don't know. It, but this, uh, 
for a little couple minutes, the crowd was taken out of this match because of the spot. Everyone knows the elephant in the room I'm talking about. the. Uh, this is how many times now and how many weeks this has happened. First with the Pac match. And that's the, that's I don't want to say scariest part, but maybe alarming. They might want to look into this. I, why can't refs just, because I feel like WWE refs are guilty of this too, but I was always under the impression from all the stories and shoot interviews I've seen over the years that refs are like they take it fucking serious and sometimes they get a bonus to actually like reprimand guys in matches and like they their rule was like just count to three no matter what and that's on the workers if they don't kick out and they don't remember the finish but as a ref you never stop you just do it like it's legit and 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 thinking about it like logic wise why wouldn't you just do that anyway it makes total sense to do it that way let it be on the workers it's more real looking that way too i feel like true to life right and the thing is yeah, no, the thing is, and with the um, with the spot of the match, it wouldn't have been too off anyways if the referee just counted the three, because Private Party still would have won the match, because it was it was one of the members of Private Party pinning one of the members of uh, Santana and Ortiz, and so it would have been fine. The finish would have still been the same for the most part. Uh, yeah, and then because it, it was supposed to be the classic, the the. He, the referee gets dragged out of the ring or just the, gets attacked and, you know, referees are made out of fucking sandpaper. So, you know, one, one poke to the ankle and they're out of commission for the next day. Except the uh, WWE yeah. ladies ref. Mm. Oh, no. Yeah, Sorry. No, they'll, they'll fuck you up real hard. Um, if it was Aubrey Edwards, Aubrey Edwards would have yanked her leg into the ring and brought the other member in and flung him across the ring. No, not Aubrey. I would um, never. She scares me, literally. <laughs> She's a bad bitch. Um... But yeah, and so I... I That's know, twice we've first. called women bitches on the show this week, Kyle. We're on a roll. I mean, I mean, to be fair, I said bad bitch. That's a compliment. And I said basic uh, bitch. That's that's not a compliment, but it's an actual quote, again, to cover my ass. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, but I mean, to be fair, I don't think it, it took too much out of the match. The match was still really good. My God, the fucking finish was fantastic. I think Gin and Juice is one of... First of all, a fantastic cocktail. Second of all, a fantastic finisher, especially for private party. Um, and third. So, yeah, I think and, regardless of. No, and third, too many cutters, too many RKOs. That's my biggest complaint with private party match. They do that move too many times. Travis, I was really hoping you were going to say, and third, a good, a, uh, a great, uh, yeah, fuck, I just had a stroke. A good Anyways, goosin. Was... A, a good goosin. I was going to say a good Snoop Dogg song, but I fucked it up. So. Sasha Banks' new Nowhere remix theme. I, I know you already bought it on iTunes. I have Apple Music. I don't buy shit. Pirate. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think good match regardless. Uh, I'm not done on the ref thing, by the way. I have one more big complaint. Go, I, go for it. I can't put all this on the ref because, Jesus Christ. Gee, when the ref did this... The guys just sat there and and just stared into space and did nothing. There was no attempt to maybe carry the fucking match on or show some attempt of a struggle. He laid there with his legs in the air, missionary, ready to take it, meet in. I'm sorry to put that I visual in people's say, heads, but that's what happened. I will say, though, my, my biggest complaint in wrestling, like, this has pissed me off for years, and it happens in, it, like... It's not one person, it's not one promotion. Every single person, every single promotion does this. Whenever it's the finish, or not a finish, I'm sorry, whenever they do the roll up, um, and it's a schoolboy, or it's it's the uh, the sunset flip, anything like that. Kick your fucking I, legs! Thank you. I Kick your fuck, pretend you're swimming. I don't give a shit. You went to wrestling school. What, you're on the big stage? You're just going to lay there like a porn star? What the fuck? Thank you, Colin. I can't, I can't stand it. When the wrestlers just sit there and wait for the referee to almost hit two, like, do something. Look like you're struggling. It makes no sense when you just sit there. Another one, too, are, like, small packages. When they do, like, it's a crisp-looking small package, but like a Bret Hart match or any of those guys from that era, they, they're they like moving around in the package like they're trying to get out of it. No, these guys are just like, we turn into, it's like Samus from Metroid. I'm in a ball. Just sit there idle. Fucking, yeah. Maybe on the same page more than ever right now in this segment in the history of knowing you. Boom. Kick your fucking legs. There's another shirt. Merry Christmas. I think we, I think we have a fucking store ready to open on pro wrestling tees. 
be fantastic. I think we broke some kind of space time continuum from that kind of level, of same page, and Than Thanos just got reborn somewhere, some shit. I don't know. Something just happened. The, wor the world is slowly going to end, and it's just because we we both we both agreed to the point where we were screaming in in unison, like the same point. It's it's just a beautiful it's a beautiful thing when we agree. I will say this. I bet that that referee, and I know all the shit with Josh Bottom, Bodum, whatever, in progress, beating the shit out of that referee recently, but I'm sure that he got an earful from PNP, especially the guys in PNP. Look at him backstage after the match. I, I see the thing is, I don't think, I, I agree. The referee should always just count to three, regardless. And if it's, if the, like, if the finish is blown, that's not the referee's problem. It's the wrestlers who fucked up the spot. And so now the referee and uh, Santana and Ortiz probably just got their ears kicked in. So to each their own. I I'm suppose. still surprised to this day, quite frankly, that when it happened in the Pac match, that Pac, knowing him and just how he looks and just probably just the character, I guess. Maybe that's how good he is, that he didn't pick that referee up like just a piece of paper and rip him in half. <laughs> that fucking right there on the spot. <laughs> Honestly. My God. I, I, is it main event time? It's main event time, a match <clears throat> I was definitely looking forward to when it was announced last week. Delivered. Darby Allen, John Moxley. It wasn't long, but it was a phenomenal match, in my opinion. This delivered for me. And then you know what? I didn't think it would. Come at me. I thought this was going to flop. And these guys, I did, I'm not going to say these guys had a Meltzer fucking match or a classic, but it was a good match. And it. It's modern wrestling. I got to get off that shit sometimes. Yeah, selling is questionable, but if you can accept it, it was fine. And you know what? I've said it almost every episode and probably every time I've ever talked about Darby Allen on any wrestling show. But kind of seeing something in a different light, Colin. You know that I always compared him to maybe a Jeff Hardy, right? But after seeing this, he looks like a protege of fucking goddamn John Moxley more than Jeff Hardy. Exactly. No, and... and uh... My fuck, my god, that entrance Darby Allen made was absolutely great. I like the idea of cool entrances happening at random shows. Obviously, I don't want him to be, like, bastardized and, you know, it, one of those things where, like, it happens so often that it's not cool anymore. But every now and then, you do something cool like that, and it, it delivers. He pops out of the body bag, he skates board down to the ring. I, I think Darby Allen's a future champion. Uh, future world champion AEW, hands down. I think he's a phenomenal character. Um, yeah, I think I think this match was fantastic. I think Moxley and Allen are two guys who could probably wrestle for a good month, couple months, and it and they do something new every time. I want to see a no holds barred match between these two. I'm sure we'll get that. Another thing that we talked about on the full gear review that um, we we kind of both predicted that yes, we would have put Moxley over Omega, which they did because he needs more credibility, right? Because Omega's going to be over with the fans if he wins or loses, no matter what. But pretty much any guy in the elite is right now, unless they're turned heel storyline, they're going to get that. Um, Moxley when he came out for the first time on this on this episode of Dynamite, when he first appeared, and he got a godlike pop. A godlike reaction. And you're seeing that's the result of that booking decision paying off at full gear. I think it got him more kayfabe wise, kind of just fan support, or just it's helping him get bigger reactions already. Because especially with the Michael Nakazawa squad, but that was easy react to get a reaction with that. But this, you know, because Darby's pretty over, you know, and I was going into that, like, is this the right call already? Because you're trying to, yeah, I thought the fans were honestly just going to side with Darby more. And it's questionable if they did again during the match or not. I feel like it was 50 50 for the most part. For sure. No, I mean, these these were definitely two guys who both super over with the crowd. I think Darby Allen is one of those guys where, like, years down the line, he is going to be one of the top baby faces in this promotion. He's going to be one of the guys that AEW helped build. And, yeah, and Moxley already a very over person. I think putting these two together, fantastic decision. It was a match where Darby Allen did not look bad, even though he lost. I mean, Christ. And I'm, I'm, I could already tell. When they did the finish with the uh, paradigm shift from the middle rope, I knew for a fact if Allen would have kicked out of that, I could have I would have heard Travis screaming all the way from where he lives, just screaming, just, "God damn it!" Because that I mean, yeah. you, you shouldn't kick out I, of that kind of finish. I would have just canceled this week's episode. Like, no, I'm, 
I'm not even setting myself up. No, but you know what I liked even more of that was the coffin drop spot. And Jesus Christ, that had to suck to take if you're a Moxley into the rear naked choke. And I'm fine. I'm surprised too. We finally saw a guy really do that spot. That's kind of a something I would have done too if I was a worker in there. At least try it. Oh, for sure, for sure. And I think I think the match started off great too, which is Moxley hops over the barricade and like like a fucking bullet, Darby Allen just darts into the screen and just knocks over Moxley with the dive. I think it's just, it's just a fantastic match altogether. I have nothing bad to say about it. And yeah, the finish was paradigm shift off the top rope, like I said, fucking brutal. But I mean, maybe the w- top three most brutal in ring spots I've seen so far in AEW uh, this year. This was nasty, and a lot of people gave Moxley shit for being safe, like Janela got and all that shit. And I saw that coming a mile away as soon as he hit that spot. But it, he was fine; he wasn't hurt. And looking back, I mean, when you look, you know, hindsight twenty twenty again, in a couple months from now, people are gonna look back and be like, "That was an awesome spot." Um, I've come around a lot on Darby Allen, man. He's just one of, one of those cases, like a Mysterio, like a guy, at norm, like the Hardys, both of them, even though Matt's kind of deezed up a little bit over the years. But uh, just the Kevin Owens, these regular type guys that you don't really see the magic until you see him work a couple times. And then you, you get it. You get, like even, you could say Samoa Joe too, too, even though he's a dump truck, he looks like shit. But he's always looked like shit. And he's been, a, he's been one of the best workers in the world when he was active. Same with Kevin Owens. Big guy can fucking move like there's no other. What a match with McIntyre this week. I know it's not a Raw review, but that that, that match isn't getting talked enough about uh, enough. Absolutely. Um. Anyway. But yeah, no, I think fant- fantastic finish, fantastic episode of AEW. Uh, what what do you grade this show? It's one of my favorite episodes of Dynamite so far. I'm gonna give it my first on this. Well, I think the second. Uh, a solid A. I really liked this episode of Dynamite. I didn't hate anything really um even things that i thought i was going to be completely cringe on going into like the Britt baker stuff especially following that banger of an opener i didn't hate and even the battle royal was lackluster was as it was as, as great as that finish was like we said earlier they it totally got a pass for me and yeah check out this episode of dynamite and if you it's we're what seven weeks into dynamite now colin and this for anyone that's never seen any AEW Dynamite episodes, this would be probably one of the three or four I'd tell them to go out of the way to see if they want to get into it, I'd recommend. What about you, Dean Douglas? Get out your chalk with your 1995 WWF reference for you. What are you graded? Uh, yeah, no, I, I got to agree with you. Give it an A. Fantastic show. Don't really have anything negative to say about it other than the stupid-ass uh, backstage segment in the box. Fantastic show all together. You had, this was another case. You had something for everybody. Um, and nothing was, I mean, yeah, Sunny Kiss and all that shit, blah, blah, blah. But it, 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 that didn't become the focal point of the match. You know what I mean? And uh, it, no. as strong as and, the and gimmicks, as strong as the gimmicks were, like I said, the match and took away, that's not what you came out of the match bitching or remembering. You, you remembered MJF being a chicken shit heel, getting the win. That's what everyone's going to talk about. It about wraps it up. It's, we had all the, the main uh, arteries. You think? Unbelievable. <laughs> it, it, there's a poor network connection or his laptop died. And the timing on this could be unbelievable. Because we are at literally at the end of the show, guys. Um, there is a network connection. What's going on here? All right. Either way, to avoid dead air, especially at the very tail end of the show, if Colin can't get connected real quick, 30 second outro real quick. My window is at Uber Tie Guy. Check out Colin on Twitter, all that goodness. He didn't have anything else really to promote. And if he did, I probably would have forgot. I did my best, Colin. If you can't get back on to hear this, on Twitter at the Abiki TMD, Union Smack. Big official Abiki TMD merch. Catch me and Drew Pro Wrestling Journal Podcast, Pro Wrestling Journal.com. That little red button down below. Hit it. Subscribe. All the goodness retro gaming and for wrestling. Until next week, I'm Colin. I'm Travis. We'll see you right here. In the alternative. Yep.